All right, chip of the day. We have an LM1117, a very popular part. It is a voltage regulator, and it comes in many varieties. You can get them uh, in the 1.8, 2.5, 3.3, 3, and 5 volt versions. I actually have a bunch in my little voltage regulator box here. Um, uh, these guys here, I've got the 5 volt version. Uh, but we're going to be talking about the 3.3 volt version today because I needed some. I didn't have any and I thought it would be uh, good for breadboarding. And, the, and uh, the reason that I bought them was, you know, you go to AliExpress and a lot of these um, stores on AliExpress will give you free shipping if you buy $10 worth. So sometimes you just need to add it up to $10. So I think this is probably a buck and a half to add to the, uh, to the order. So... Um, you can say, well, what's that? It's a, it's a big, big, long thing. Well, it's, it's a strip of PC boards and you can just break them off. There you go. And then you have, uh, you have just one regulator on pins. So they're piece, the, the, they're proto board ready. So if I need a 3.3 volt supply, I can just pop one of these in and I'm ready to go. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, like I said, that these are pretty popular. You find them on all kinds of boards. Like this is a uh, uh, this is a ESP32, which is a 3.3 volt device, but it has on board a 3.3 volt regulator right there. That's a 1117, and so you can input 5 volts to this thing, and then it'll regulate it down to 3.3. The dropout uh, voltage on these things is pretty low. Let's take a look at the data sheet to see what uh, what overhead you need. Um, let's see here. Electrical characteristics. All right, reference voltage, output voltage, line regulation. Uh, they have something called dropout, minimum load, quiescent. Here we go, dropout. All right, so they have a uh, dropout voltage. Here, can you read that? Give me a little better magnification. Um, a dropout voltage. So at 100 milliamps, the dropout voltage is uh, typical 1.1, max 1.2. And at 500 milliamps, which I don't really recommend, uh, but we will get to it. it the dropout voltage goes up to 1.25. So, so about 1.2 volts of dropout is pretty good. So 3.3 plus 1.2, obviously 5 volts is going to work just fine. So, um, yeah, let's take a look at some of the other characteristics here. Uh, uh, minimum load current. It, it wants to have about a two milliamps just to work right. So it doesn't like to just be flopping around. Um, let's see, just pin current. Yeah, I don't know. So uh, how good of a regulation do these things do? Uh, let's see, we have the 3.3 volt device so it can go up to 3.333 or down to 3.267. So that's its range. Um, yeah, let's hook one up. Uh, I have one right here. So we have, um, uh, let's see, I don't need this one. Uh, I have uh, five, five volts coming in, and uh, this should be regulating it down to 3.3. So let's, uh, let's double check that with a voltmeter. And we have 3.315, very good. Okay, so it's doing its job. Let's load it down. I uh, just disconnected the wrong one. Yeah, I went down there. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna be using this little miniware dummy load. I really like this little thing. Um, it did act up on me the other day though. It was giving me errors. It said, a f it said the fan, there was a fan error. And so I contacted the company and they said, oh yeah, we've been having some problems and we've updated the software. And so uh, he gave me a hex file, which I downloaded to the part and it's all good to go again. So if, if you have that problem on yours, you're getting some kind of weird error, you might want to go to their website and get their newest uh, 
newest firmware and download it. Now, the other thing that I've done uh, since I've showed this on screen is um, in the back uh, is the uh, plus and minus cables for the load. In the middle here, there's also a little connector. I'll pull that out. There's also this little connector, and it comes with the mating connector attached. And so I've soldered a couple wires in there. So what are these? These are the sense leads. So you can have a four wire contact to your load because you're going to be drawing a lot of load. You want to be able to measure the voltage at the load without any drop in the line. So uh, I have added the sense lines and the sense lines just um, parallel the cable and they, till they get to the end. So each, uh, each connector here has both the sense and the force. Um, so I have, I have a four wire at this connection here. So that works out really, really well. So what we're going to do is we will turn this guy on. You have to hold these two buttons down for a second. And let's see if I can tip it up so we can, we can read it. I know this thing's super, super small. Let's see if I get a little closer. All right, good. So let me hook it up here to ground and the output. And then we can program this thing. Right now it's programmed for, uh, let's see, let's program it for 100 milliamps. So there's 100 milliamps and we push the button and we're measuring 3.3 volts and we are pulling 0 0.1, 0 0.1 amps. So that's working really good. Let's, uh, let's crank it up a bit here. Let's go up to, uh, oops, that's a little too high. Let's go up to 300. There we go. Turn that on. 3.29. So it's still doing good. And let's go up to half an amp. Why not? And we're here at uh, 3.28. So it's doing a really, really good job. Now, um, one of the problems with these devices are is that they don't have much heat sink. Um, they, uh, focus on that. Uh, these little PC boards don't have a lot of copper on them, so you're basically looking at just the part without any heat sink. If you want to use these guys at, at larger current draws, then you need to have a PC board area that does some of the heat sinking for you. Um, otherwise, this thing's not going to do much good. All right. So the way that you can test these is to measure the temperature of the case. You really don't want it to go over I don't know, maybe 100 degrees C or something like that. You just don't want it, don't want it to go over that at all. Let's go ahead and uh, uh, take some thermal imaging. Okay, I'm going to take a picture here. Um, and we are about 65 degrees Celsius. That's at 300 milliamps current draw. Okay, and then let me... Uh, let me go up to 400. All right, I've taken it to 400 and uh, it is at 90, 90 C and it is going up. Um, and with a, just a little bit of airflow, it'll stay there, okay? So if you are gonna use these things, um, I would say it needs to have a fan if you're going to do anything over 300 milliamps. I think without a fan, 300 milli without a fan or without a heat sink, 300 milliamps is okay. Anything above that, you, you need to start worrying about adding a heat sink, adding a fan, making sure it has some, some airflow, um, and uh, doing anything past half an amp, I think, is just not reasonable at all with these things. I know the data sheet says 800 milliamps, but I think you would have to work really, really hard to build a system that will allow you to do that. 
Okay, well, there you go. Chip of the day was an LM1117.